I'm going to focus on the marine environment, but let's discuss what are aquatic biomes and describe a little bit of characteristics of them. Aquatic biomes are basically uh, two types. You've got freshwater and marine, marine being the ocean. Obviously, the factor that affects one from the other is salinity, but if you look at one, like let's say we focus on the marine environment, depth will come into play. You can also call this sunlight or temperature. So our focus is on the marine environment. It's kind of hard to visualize, so I want you to pretend like we're looking at the ocean horizontally, and the first zone is called the intertidal zone, and I'm going to show you a little bit about it. Here you have tides. Organisms found in this zone will be our drifters or our plankton, phytoplankton, zooplankton, ultraplankton. The second zone is the neuritic zone. These two zones together can also be called the coastal zone. This is from the shoreline out to a certain um, area, makes up the intertidal neuritic zone, or both together called the, con um, the coastal zone. The continental shelf is found in the neuritic zone. The, the neuritic zone is the most diverse zone of the marine environment. It's where coral reefs are found, and estuaries can also be found in this zone. They call it the rainforest of the sea because it is the most diverse zone. The last zone is called the oceanic zone or the open sea. And in this zone, you're going to find large mammals. Um, it is the area of the marine environment where you'll find all the major light zones. This is a view of each zone I just referenced. Here we have the intertidal where the high and low tides occur. Here would be the neuritic zone, which is where coral reefs are found. If you see the continental shelf is located in between these two, and the coastal zone represents both these zones as they represent with this line. Then you have the open sea, which is the largest zone of the marine um, biome. So let's talk a little bit about the light zones within the oceanic zone. Your first zone is epipelagic zone. It is a fully lit zone. The word that describes light is photic, and the fully lit zone would be euphotic. You do not have to know the meters involved. The second zone is mesopelagic zone. This zone can be euphotic, and it can also be dysphotic, which means somewhat lit. It's a twilight or a twinkle zone. And if you look at this picture, you could see the different color hues of blue fully lit zone here and it's starting to um, diminish so you have kind of twinkling light here the bathyal zone will be dysphotic and at times will also be aphotic which means no light so we've got euphotic fully lit zone dysphotic a twinkling or twilight zone and aphotic is no light the next zone is the abyssal zone anything below this will be aphotic or no light and finally, you got the Hadal zone, which basically is just where trenches are found. Um, here's another picture. Oh, and the benthic zone would be all of this line right here. Benthic is where the benthos are, which is the floor of the ocean. So here's a better view. Right here would be your intertidal zone. Here would be your neuritic zone. And then where the drop occurs is where you have the marine environment. So all of this area right here, I'm sorry, the open sea or the oceanic zone. Epipelagic sunlight, meso, twilight, and then you've got the bathyal and abyssal, which are our darker zones. And this is your hadal, which is where the trenches are. Here's another picture of the zones with different shades of uh, blue for... A demonstration of the light zones and here's epipelagic euphotic meso would be your dysphotic and bathyo would begin the aphotic maybe around this area right here here's another description of the zones but in this picture you are showing marine organisms uh, again your large mammals would make up the majority of the oceanic uh, zone or the open sea zone and as you get deeper and we're going to talk about these organisms you have all these different um, organisms in the abyss zone